Thanks for staying with us. You're welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. Just before that break, we promised to bring on our special guest, Gbadibo Rose Vivo, popularly known as JRV, the former governorship candidate of Labour Party in Lagos, for a quick catching up of the governance of Lagos State under the stewardship of Babajide Sonwolu. Good morning and good to have you around, Gbadibo. Good morning. Happy to be here. Thank you indeed. Thank you. Uh, I know that you are keen to speak about developments in Lagos State, the Unjeko, uh, the Blue and the Red Line, etc. But I mean, uh, uh, my point is that uh, it isn't so much about politics now. Uh, I think it is about governance. Uh, if we have to talk about politics, though, uh, because of course you'll be obliged, why don't we start uh, from the politics that seems to be consuming? your party, Labour Party. I believe that, that you are still a member and that you are going to be playing a role uh, in the proposed convention of the party. But it looks like everything has gone haywire with the Labour Party. Uh, the tussle between NLC and uh, Aburi, your chairman, and of course all the complaints about not knowing why this convention has to be now and what precisely uh, uh, you, you'll be doing. Tell us what the issues are as far as Labour Party is concerned, nationally and in Lagos, and what role you'll be playing at the coming convention? Well, so um, inter-party politics is a contact sport, right? There are multiple interests, and we have a potential to elect new leadership. So these things are not abnormal. I mean, uh, coming from the PDP, this used to happen there, the ABC ruling party, they have their own um, processes as well. The idea is that this is a party that is building itself. There's a lot of interest in the party. A number of people want to ensure that they take part in the process of electing new leadership. Um, as far as we know, there's still um, conversation about whether the convention has been postponed or if it's going to go on. But eventually, through all of this engagement, there's going to come out of it a solution that will have everybody on the table and everybody involved to be able to move the party forward. All right, Baribol, you know, I know that you are here also to talk about the governance in Lagos. And then, you know, we have to make sure that we balance our criticism with uh, facts. You were quoted as uh, saying that the uh, Lagos uh, Blue Line Rail project by the APC government, you know, has been an absolute failure because it took uh, 16 years for the government to get to 16 kilometers of rail. But the APC government will disagree with you. They have held the completion of that Blue Line project as a, as a very successful milestone. The governor says that they are the first sub-national government in Africa to fund and deliver a rail system from the state's balance sheet. Okay. Um, so the question first is, when you look at the financial um, inaccuracies or um, con uh, what's the word? There's a lot of numbers that are not adding up. You look at the Chinese contractors' um, sum for the monies that are supposed to have been spent on the Blue Rail, and it's almost times 10 of what is on Lagos' balance sheet. So that's one. That's inconsistency. The second thing is, if the state government does not have the capacity to deliver the project, why are they burdening themselves with doing that as opposed to approaching the private sector to do it in partnership with them. The idea about delivering a project is about delivering a project in the fastest possible time to benefit the most amount of people and have it to be as accessible as possible. And if you are taking 16 years to do 16 kilometers of rail, which was with the contract was actually for about between 24.5 to 27 kilometers of rail, right? <laughs> That is inadequate. And when you even look at number of um, coaches on board, the cost of it, if you look at the blue line during the day, it's not yet reached its potential even. So for me, we need Lagos State to be connected as soon as possible yesterday. And it's not enough to say I paid for something. Is that the most efficient way that it should have been done? I've sat down with people that said they've approached the government to do all the rails at the same time, but they were rebuffed because the government did not, because the government asked for equity in their company, individuals in government asked for equity in their company, and things like that. No, I'm, telling, I'm saying what I, what, I'm saying conversations that I've had, 
right? Yeah. Um, the fact of the matter is, if you are taking 16 years to do 16 kilometers of rail, it's extremely inefficient. So, so it's about time. Um, is the red line 16 kilometers no, no, or is it 37? Is the the yes, but the blue line and the red line, which was just commissioned, is 37 kilometers in three years, right? But the blue line is sharing, sorry, the red, red line, line, the red yes. line is sharing a path with the rail that has been laid by the federal government. The, I, I believe that that is not completely accurate. You're conflating lines that were laid down by the federal government prior rather than what was actually initiated by the Buhari government more recently. So the federal government, federal. federal. Buhari government is a federal government yes, as well. Yes, however, the lines that you're conflating, so the lines that they lay down, the names are different. So the names on the red line, you can tell that they're different. The lines are actually different. The train tracks are different. So I, I think what your, what your misunderstanding is this. The federal government, under whoever, whether you're talking about Buhari, good luck, Jonathan, they lay down tracks. Right? They've laid down tracks. So the conversation is about the amount of tracks that Lagos State itself has laid down. You must give credit to them for the bridges that they've done to be able to allow for um, the smooth flowing of the red line, um, the stations that they've built. Yes. But we're talking about the tracks that have been laid down by Lagos State and its plan, its overall plan to connect Lagos State, which is about 167 um, kilometers of rail. Right now, if it's taking 16 years to do 16 kilometers, it's very worrisome about how long it's going to take to do 160 kilometers. And that's the conversation. Another conversation is the openness and transparency of the monies that they are spending on these things. Why are there so many inconsistencies? Why are they not opening and being transparent about the cost per kilometer of this rail? And why is why would there be 100 kilometers? on the Chinese contractor's um, statement compared to a billion on legal state's own statement. So these are things that in, in being open, in ensuring we're getting the best deal, you start to get public trust, right? And the unfortunate thing about Lagos and the way it runs its finance system, the opaque nature of it is what allows for a lot of corruption, allows for a lot of situation where you're looking and saying that we're getting things times three the value of what we should be paying for them. Okay, let me come in here and just uh, switch on the topic a bit. So we're looking at f food inflation numbers going as high as 35.41% in the country. Uh, but if we hone in on Lagos State, what are your thoughts on the Mama Put initiative that was introduced by the Sonolu administration to address these challenges posed by the rising cost of living? How effective do you believe this program has been in meeting the needs of residents? And given Lagos State significant revenue generation capacity and economic potential, do you think initiatives like this represent the most impactful and imaginative investments that the Lagos State Government could make to improve the life, livelihood of its citizens? Or are there other areas where these resources could be better allocated? Yes, um, there are a lot of things that happen in Lagos State just for media attention to show some kind of action. Right, so it's a lot of forward movement, but just going around in circles. The Mamaput initiative is not well thought out. Yes, it will help a few amount of people, but I don't believe that that was the best solution. I think that the markets across the state are a better, more imaginative solution. But then I've also seen many videos of people coming to complain that the discounts on them are not even enough to make them affordable. Um, so, for us, you want a situation where stakeholders at what levels are being carried along. You have churches, mosques, you have a lot of individuals in different um, ward, at the local ward level, they are already doing these things. They need to be supported, they need to be brought on board. Um, bigger interventions, bigger engagement with stakeholders. Because these are things that should have actually been put in place before the subsidy removal and this inflation hike. But we are here, we are where we are now. And we need more stakeholder engagement. Yes, there was stakeholder engagement across political parties that was announced, which was a step in the right direction. But at the same time, it has not gotten down to the world level, which is why you are still seeing when people are sharing food, there are stampedes, people are dying. Why? Because there, is, there isn't a belief that there is enough to go around. And 
You can get that belief when you operate at the ward level with community leaders and people in the community that the people trust, right? So there needs to be more stakeholder engagement at the local government level, at ward level, grassroots level. Um, secondly, for a state that is so high on consumption, like Lagos State, there are other levers that must be played with to be able to ensure that we're reducing our inflation, such as the cost of transportation. And not just audio announcements where you hear this, you go, you see something else. And the state needs to build and get trust from the people. So when it says A, that A should be A. You know, you want to cut down cost of transportation so people have more discretionary funds to buy things. You want to also um, do an intervention fund for SMEs. Currently, about costs from getting loans from microfinance banks are upward of 40%. So that needs to be done. And Buddy did it during his time. Um, you also need interventions for hotels, hospitality management, uh, things like that, that hire a lot of people. So they are not letting go of people that are already employed. The unemployment rate is increasing because there are so many people that are letting go of their workers. And also to now start to have a situation where if you have people at the local government level and this intervention is coming, they are the ones that are going to be sharing it and making sure that the people know that this is consistent, this is going to be there and they, they don't have any reason to be rushing and then people are dying because they are even trying to get food. So those are some of the thoughts that come to mind on how to manage this inflation crisis. Okay. So I would like to go a little bit back to the trains, the blue line and the red line, because with the blue line, you have emphasized 16 kilometers in 16 years. However, I did counter with saying the red line is 37 kilometers in three years. And you've also spoken about private individuals approaching the Lagos state government, asking for equity or ownership. Now, I want to ask, why should private individuals fund or own part of a public good such as a rail project? How would they raise revenues to match the costs of such an expansive project that goes over marshlands, that goes over a very difficult terrain? Would that not mean that individuals who use the trains would have to pay higher costs, ticketing costs, for example, and also that how would the um, and how what would that mean for Lagosians if private individuals or private companies owned a public good such as, as our infrastructure and our rail services? Um, well, that, okay. So you look at the lucky um, toll gates that existed before the NSARS. Um, this was a concession that was done between the private government private company and the government. These are not new things to the state. The idea, though, is openness and transparency. The World Bank has cost for achieving per kilometer rail, whether it's high-speed rail, as, is the, as you can get in Ethiopia, or tram systems, as we are getting in Lagos, right? Um, so they are cost. Now, if the government has a policy of openness. Anybody that is coming to work on this will be meeting those costs, and that is what will give approval. On, unlike what we have today, which is very opaque financial systems, is padi no padi, you get a contractor that will do something and you just get a price, right? A contract sum. It's not broken down. Now, the idea of first establishing a culture of openness is that you get the most efficient construction process that will be able to give you your infrastructure at the best possible price and an efficient system because that private sector is trying to deliver that project in the fastest possible time so they can start to recoup their cost. Now, once you started that way, the cost would already be taken into consideration and they want to do business. If you charge if you are charging a ridiculous amount of money, people will not use the train, Sorry, right? Yeah, so alternatives to rail, because with oh, Lekki, there are alternative routes. However, with the rail lines, they're not alternative rail routes. I, I, so I, I, therefore, if you, no matter what you charge, that would be the only route if it's a rail line. Well, I think you're conflicting different transport systems. I think that what Lagos really needs is a multimodal, multimodal transport system. So you also need your waterways to be going properly, you need your road networks to be going properly, and you need rail. The idea is how can you have all of this simultaneously going on so we have an interconnected city? Now, I'm saying that if 
it's taking 16 years. And I, I think you're also conflating something. I said it's taking 16 years to achieve 16 kilometers of the blue line. The red line, three years. I've, that has never been in dispute. The only conversation is that they are sharing lines that have been laid by the federal government, right? And Lagos State laying its own lines. This is how long it's taking. So it's inefficient. I don't want a situation where it's my grandchild that will be celebrating Lagos State being properly connected by rail, right? So we need to step that up because our population is also increasing. There are more people that are going to need to go around Lagos, right? So we need to have a multimodal means of transportation. It's much more effective to move around Lagos by water because it's a collection of islands. But our water transportation system is yet to be normalized. Our waterways are yet to be properly dredged. And another reason for that is the opaque nature of our finance system, the contracts that they are awarding for this dredging, right? And in setting up an open transparent system, Lagos State will start to get a much better deal in terms of um, implementing infrastructure projects. All right, Jarvi, I get you, uh, but um, I'm wondering uh, when you keep emphasizing on 16 years uh, for 16 kilometers um, uh, of rail tracks, uh, isn't that uh, rather erroneous? Uh, given the fact uh, uh, that bridges, you know, have had to be constructed uh, uh, on marsh roads, you know, etc. I mean, is it fair to keep saying that it took 16 uh, uh, years for 16, you know? I think, I think that Nigeria and Nigerians have become too used to mediocrity. And, and it's unfortunate because it's dollars that we are spending for this. We're not taking sand and giving to contractors, right? You see Ethiopia delivering high-speed rail. We're not talking about trams that are just going slowly. We're talking about high-speed rail. They are doing this in four years, right? And you have a situation where they are doing 35 kilometers of rail, about 20, um, 20 stations, and they are achieving it in three years. While I understand why people might Let's say... Ask about that, because the Ethiopian rail system originally started with 41 trains. However, less than half, I think only 18, are still working today. So is it not better that we take our time and create something that's sustainable rather than rush a project out of the gate and then have most of the trains or trams not working in the next three years? I think we are conflating maintenance or actually setting out your correct, the idea of the project. That, that is their own failure, right? But the conversation about delivering on a project cannot be questioned. They delivered on the project. We're, we're tired of having all these excuses and stories. We need people to deliver on projects, right? I think it's extremely inefficient and mediocre to continue making excuses for the government. Um, for me, you made, some, you made um, a statement about building on bridges, building on marshlands and all of that, right? And yes, that can be a consideration. But when you talk to, when you read reports um, from Chinese construction company and you actually talk to engineers about this, there's also a lot of inefficiency in relation to payments being made in time, right? Um, expectations from the state that was not met. Um, there was also the politics of it, where successive governments came and felt that this one was initiated by another governor, so they are not going to carry it on. Some of these things are the delays in, in reason why we saw delay um, with this project. For me, it's about prioritizing the Lagosian, their needs, their wants, the effectiveness of being able to move them around Lagos in the most efficient way. That should be the priority. Well, let, me, let me just quickly come in as a follow-up uh, there, uh, uh, because when you uh, say things like Nigerians have gotten used to mediocrity, I'm not so sure if that is uh, a fair comment on the intelligence of Nigerians. Uh, when people applaud uh, little gains, it is not because they have not seen uh, uh, better things elsewhere. It is because they probably also appreciate, and they are not putting politics into it, they, are they also appreciate uh, what it takes you know, to get a few things done. Uh, I'm not so sure of how much of the overall import of the Lagos uh, uh, transport policy that you, that you have read or you are familiar with. The multimodal system that you are talking about is very well captured there. And that's what actually explains, in my opinion, uh, what has been done, what has been done in the last, you know, 16 years that you mentioned. It's because you have had continuity. 
That's why you can measure the progress that has been passed from one administration to the other. Uh, you know, of course, that the real uh, outlay for Lagos, you know, you have about six to seven different uh, 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 color reels. You've had the blue, red has, has come, purple is coming, yellow is coming. It's because, you know, there's a lot of thinking that went into this. Um, except you are not familiar with it, the number of people that the waterways are also moving in Lagos, I believe, has more than tripled in the last 16 years that you have chosen you know, to look at. So I'm saying that if you're familiar with what Lagos State is doing, uh, what is driving the overall strategy, you will see that it might not be as fast as you're thinking, but it's moving one by one. So my question first will be, what will you have done differently? More importantly, you keep talking about uh, opacity in the finances of the state. Um, I know that uh, um, uh, the other gentleman who ran the Lagos race uh, with you, uh, uh, Mr. Folusha Dowati, has been consistent from day one since the election ended, writing letters, critiquing, not criticizing, critiquing uh, the budget of Lagos State, even writing letters to the state government, getting responses. Don't you think that that sort of approach might be better in a state that you yourself, you are still looking forward, you know, to govern rather than, you know, in my opinion, um, uh, politicize the little development, the little gains, the little strides that the government is making so far. Okay. Don't you think that the Felicia um, Duarte, so Duarte, you know, uh, a strategy uh, is more, is fairer and a lot more effective? Um, I, I would beg to differ with that. Um, first of all, I think that some people, most Nigerians, not all, they, they would accept certain levels of mediocrity because of the abysmal performance of successive governments. If they were in another country, those same Nigerians, they'll be complaining about the same issues. I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Um, there's a level of tokenism that has happened in Nigeria for a very long time where a lot of wealth is stolen from our commonwealth and you are given a bridge that costs times five of what it's supposed to cost. And we look at, okay, we got one bridge and we should clap, but we could have had five bridges. And that's what this conversation is about. Nigeria as a nation on paper should be one of the most powerful countries in the world, on paper. If we talk about plans, resources that we have, intellect, quality of people that are all over the world leading agencies. But unfortunately, that is not our reality. And it's not our reality because we are consistently accepting mediocrity. And that's what we're trying to move us away from. Because we are a nation that can be excellent. And it's not just, one, it's not just a choice that we have to accept or not accept is a question of life and death because at the point where we start to hit 400 million as a population, we cannot afford mediocrity, we cannot afford inefficiency. In the next 50, 60 years, we are looking at a population in Lagos State of 40 million people. Are we still going making excuses of, okay, successive governments, and now we have 16, another 16 kilometers of rail in another 30 years? No, we cannot afford that anymore. We have a, a huge youth population that needs to be productive, right? So for me, I'm saying that we need to step up our delivery of projects so that Lagos State can run efficiently, so that people can move their goods faster. They're not stuck in traffic. They're not losing money, right? We need a situation where people can have four or five meetings in a day in Lagos and not be stuck in traffic, right? We don't need this token talking projects that just exist to show that the government is working, but at what cost? If we are to open the pay, the, the, I mean, even when you look at what happened when Ambody took over Fashola, I have seen the cost that they are spending on boreholes, on websites. Um, Mr. Funcho Drati has exposed some of the cost that they are using. They are using our Commonwealth to fund their party programs. He exposed it as well. Of what consequence has that been? With his own method, separate from my own method, he has highlighted monies that have been inappropriately taken by this government. What has the government done based on his letter writing? What have they done? Right, so I think that Nigeria and my generation, 
we're, we're tired of this surface sort of conversations that are not moving us forward because this country is continuing in a nose dive. And we are the ones starting families now. We are the ones that are going to have sent children to school. We are the ones that have to live with the failures that generations are passing down and bequeathing to us. So we are not going to accept mediocrity anymore. And I'm sorry that, you know, it might not be as nicely tailored as people want. Um, but the fact of the matter is, I, I respect Mr. Afonso Duarte. I think what he's doing is fantastic. Let him continue on that track. I have my own track that we're going towards. The most important thing is that the people of Lagos get quality governance at the best price for the maximum amount of people. Quality governance. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. I would have loved to ask you about, you know, the ethnic crisis in Lagos, which is, you know, rife at this moment. I hope that we get to uh, speak with you again the next time you come on the morning show. I'd thank like you to thank so you much for very me. much indeed. Thank thank you. Much.